Hey guys, welcome to Grooves and Motivation Live. This is Jermaine Morgan, and today we're going to be talking about what is the cost. So stay tuned. <music> All right, let's jump right into this thing this morning. Good morning to everybody who is joining me or whatever time it is for you, whether you're watching live or you're watching in the replay. I appreciate you guys are hanging out with me as usual. Be sure to drop in the comments before we even get started where you're watching from and uh, let me know how long you've been around. That's something I really never asked that question. How long have you been around? Is this your first time? Or are you like, I'm a regular doc. I check, I check out all the lives. I get a lot of people... Uh, telling me or sending me inboxes that kind of stuff about yeah i've been watching been following the videos for a minute so let me know if this is your first time checking out the video or if you're new to the channel that that kind of thing i would love to um i love to know all right so let's jump right into this thing uh i had a i was trying to actually play uh to a track and for whatever reason it wouldn't do right I like had two tracks. I said, I'm going to try this second one. And it just, for some reason, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work out. And I said, you know what? We just, we're going to go live today in terms of, uh, we're going to create a loop on the spot. I, I was hoping that my tracks would work out for me, but that's all right. We got you. All right. So we will, we'll build from scratch here. All right. So. It's too long. I don't like it. <laughs> it's too long. All right, let's try it again. Thank you. 
What's up, Charles? Andre, I see you guys. <laughs> Says Tuesday. Tuesday class is in session. Thank you for the short film on playing the bass. I needed that. And thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Y'all late coming in this morning. I, <laughs> I normally have comments waiting on me time I started, but uh, it's all good. I appreciate you guys for being here. So again, if you're late, I said, let me know where you're watching from and also how long have you been around the channel? Are you new? Is this a new experience for you or have you been around for a while? I'm interested to hear. Uh, oh, you said hymns. Okay, got you, got you. All good, man. Mm-hmm. 
I'm struggling to figure out what I want to play because the groove feels so good I don't want to play nothing over it. <laughs> it's like one of the things you can just let it sit there and you can kind of reflect and so I'm really struggling because I'm hearing other instruments in my head at the same time I'm playing like I hear a piano I hear a big string arrangement uh, over the top of this like uh, cer certain pieces of music when I'm working on them I, I hear them really really big uh, and this is one of those pieces of music I hear an acoustic guitar in there and um, <laughs> when you say world music gospel and, and church folks automatically think worldly I don't mean worldly when I think world I mean this music is an inclusive to people all around the world so this is the way I'm hearing it and so like I'm struggling to play right now because I'm, I'm hearing so many different things. Uh, yeah, so uh, let, let me read a couple of these comments here while I'm here. Charles says, I've been riding for a few years now. I think I'm in my third year. I'll be here till the wheels fall off. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you, Charles. Uh, Andre says, I've been here on your channel for three years and I'm heading to Tampa on a delivery. Dope, man, be safe. How about you add some shakers to the track? It sounds really smooth. Yeah, I have to kind of fake it. I don't have my microphone hooked up in my looper. So I've kind of have to, I would have to fake some shakers with my bass. That's it. It's almost sound like a scratch. Uh, like a, a record scratch because I, I don't have my uh I know what you're saying though yeah I got you um Chuck what's up man George says I live I live the group uh, mostly used in okay I got you uh, I love the group too love the groove too I'm just reading everything wrong my bad man love the groove too mostly used in Africa yeah so that's what I'm saying it, it feels like when you see it, like there are certain pieces of music that I, when I'm creating it, there's a visual that goes with it. Like there's a whole, like I can see it. Like it ain't just, it's not just music um, that's audible. You can also see it. Like you can see scenes, you can see, it might be that movie side of me or whatever. Uh, good morning, Melvin. So yeah, so like you can hear all kind of parts and pieces and like, 
I like music that makes you think, that makes you see stuff, rather than you just focusing on who's playing what, the chops that they're they're playing. It focuses in on a bigger picture, so you're able to like just see a lot of stuff around the music. That's I can't explain the way I think, but sometimes that's the way I'm hearing stuff. So like we took a little guitar part. I'm gonna pull my pick out just for the sake of it. bass with a pick by the way it just is the vibe pick out. Uh, 
Mysterio. Kenya's in the building. Uh, you're such an inspiration. Your sound is so unique and intriguing. Thank you for that, man. God be, be the glory. I appreciate it. All right, that that groove is, it is what it is. <laughs> I don't think there's too much more I'm going to add to it. Some tambourine and a little. You over there producing, Andre. Yeah, I, I don't, um, yeah, it feels good. I think, um, that might be on a record somewhere. <laughs> Just hang tight. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and save that. Morning. The whole thing sounds great. Tell us some of the different modes that you're using. Some of the different modes, I mean, really major. Just straight mode. Like, it's basically based around just a regular major scale, like major pentatonic, you can get away with a lot of that stuff uh, over it. I'm not like doing a whole bunch of different modes. Granted, you can pull a lot of stuff out of there, but my approach is typically uh, simple. Joey! Oh, I thought that was my dude, Joey. Never mind. <laughs> I read it wrong. Joel! Uh, should I buy a six string bass? I'm a beginning bass player and only um, have a four string. That's totally up to you, man. I, I always tell people um, get what speaks to you. Um, if you're comfortable on the four and you want to explore the six string, it doesn't hurt anything to if you can afford it and you can have a six. It didn't hurt anything to get a six and try seeing what you can figure out and learn on a six string. It, I mean, the only way you're going to figure out if you like it, if you try it, you know what I'm saying? Maybe go out and play a few and see how they make you feel. Do you feel creative? Do you feel expressive? Um, you know, um, as far as me telling you four, five, or six, that really is up to you. Uh, so I know that's a, a really simple answer, but yeah. I was afraid of six string for a while. Um, you know, I picked one up a few times when I was younger and played around with it, but it just looked like too many strings to me. So I was kind of afraid of it until I just picked one up and started playing. And it's like, oh, okay, I got it. And as a professional, I got scared of it again. But once I, you know, started really playing around with it, like, because the one I picked up as a professional was a Ken Smith, like a big, big, huge neck. It felt like that neck was this big on this bass. And I wasn't used to it. Um, but I played it and I started getting more comfortable with it and I was like, you know what? I think I can do a six string So you don't really you don't really ever know until you try it, right? Sorry That's a good feeling groove. I might want to leave that in there just in case I want to pick it up again <laughs> All right, so Jumping right into this today uh, again. I appreciate you guys for joining me um how much does it cost now what am i referring to how much does it cost in in this um today's chat I, I want to deal with that because i know there's a lot of people and you can see in the description where i talked about discipline and asking the question is discipline overrated do we like put too much weight on talking about discipline and that kind of thing or have people in the past put too too much weight on it and if we say no then we're faced with the thing well why don't more people do it because you know we've heard we've all heard about discipline like you got to have discipline self-discipline this that and the other when it comes to discipline but at the same time that's like a really really tough thing for people to really grasp when it comes to um dealing with discipline and self-discipline so my question about how much does it cost? I'm not talking about an instrument. I'm not talking about something superficial, but I am talking about how much does it cost you to not have discipline? How much does it cost you? How much is it costing you to not be focused on the thing that you should be doing? The thing like I have um, players that I've coached and some that, you know, come to me and ask a question. Well, how long will it take me to get to this certain spot in my plan? And, it's hard for me to give a number because I'm like, that's ultimately up to you. It's really up to you and your work ethic and how you discipline yourself to do the little things, like how you discipline yourself to do these little small adjustments 
every time you see them or every time you notice them, is it something that you're overlooking or is it something that you're actually dealing with right there, right then? Like, okay, this little discipline, I need to, I need to work on this. I need to stop overlooking this. Like those little small disciplines are the thing that make up the huge difference. But at the same time, how much is it costing you for not disciplining yourself? I, you know, I, I, I can remember before I really took my website serious, like my website started as just a place for me to have my music for people to want to check out my music, like the typical artist website. Like, uh, I had, um, uh, for those who've been around this long, I had, like, I think when you initially went to JermaineMorgan.net, we had, um, my music, the artist page, the bio, the booking, all that kind of, that information that was there. And it was cool because it was the typical artist, um, website you know it was a typical thing i had my social links and all this stuff connected where you can kind of connect with me and so my website was just a big loop to get you back to all the other stuff you hear my music you can connect with me on social you can see me on youtube and back to the website and but the problem that i didn't know that i had going on with that there's something i learned about having your own website and most people, I don't know if they realize this because I hear businesses and I, well, not businesses, I hear people, individuals, musicians, not as much nowadays, but back in the day, man, I got to get me a website. I got to get me a website up so I can do X, Y, and Z. And I'm sitting here like, okay, you get your website up and then what? What are people coming for? Well, you know, I'll, I'll have... I'll have this and people can find that, you know, and nothing is wrong with having a website so people can look up and learn more about your business. All that stuff is great. But at the same time, how much is it costing you? I um, I heard what I was about to say a second ago. I heard this. I was in this webinar years ago. It's like they were talking about website in the sense of, you know, people build this really nice store. Just say it's an Apple store for sake of example. You go in there and they tell you about all of this cool gear that's coming out. Matter of fact, you can even go in the store and play on the stuff like the Apple computers and all this kind of stuff. You can look at everything and see how nice it's put together. The store is really sleek. The design is just spot on. It's like, man, this is a really nice looking store. You can go in here and play on all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, when you go to the store, it's like, you can't buy anything. So people are coming and getting the experience from your really nice store. They're seeing how nice the stuff you have to offer is. Uh, well, not necessarily what you have. They're seeing how nice your presentation is. Let's say it that way. They're seeing how nice your presentation is when they come to your store. And it's like, man, this is really nice. This stuff is well put together. It's clean. It's, it's really well organized. All these different attributes about the store but they can't leave with anything because the thing is when people come there and they enjoy it, it's like, Oh man, that's, that's awesome. Okay. Let's, let's bring it up. Let's, let's kick it up a notch. Let's say you do sell maybe one thing, a small thing. It's like, all right, we're going to give you this one song, uh, that you can buy here in the store. Okay. You can buy this one song, let's say it's CDs. Let's just go back in time for a little bit for this to make sense. Or oh, a jump drive. You got a jump drive. You come there with your jump drive and you put the, your jump drive in. You buy this one song. They load it to your jump drive. It's like, all right, thank you for coming by. And that's all they offer, that one song. I was like, wait a minute. Y'all got this big, nice store, all plush, all laid out, all this kind of stuff. And all you're offering is one song. I mean, you got these computers, you got all of this stuff, but all you're offering is one song. Like, what? what's the benefit of really having that store and having all these computers, having all this stuff, having all this gear, having all these things that you have and it looks so well in the presentation, it's so great, but you're only offering me one song. Well, that's what most of us do as artists and you know, people in business. Like, we have this one thing that we offer people and it's like it ain't really it's all right <laughs> you know people gonna listen to that song that say that song is three and a half minutes long and then it's over they're not gonna come back to your store to buy that one song over again 
And that's what we will do. And you got to get started. Don't hopefully you guys don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say. It's like you got to get started somewhere, but you got to have a little bit more as you're growing to offer people. And I believe the reason why most of us don't have more to offer people is because we don't stay disciplined. We a lot of us can focus long enough to get that one thing done. And after that, the focus goes out of the window. So it's like you see a whole bunch of coming soon signs all around the store. You can get this little thing here for now, but we got this coming soon. We got this coming soon. So most people leave having a great experience at your, at your store or whatever you got set up, your website, but they leave because you have really nothing to offer them. And most of the time it's like people are not coming back because they don't have a reason to come back. You're not giving them a reason. You're not giving them anything to come back to. And so I'm using this, the website and that whole scenario to just kind of paint a picture of sometimes we just put stuff on the back burner and like, hey, I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to start this. I'm going to like. And then you you go through the, the motion of getting the first leg of it done. Uh, I hear artists, artists as a producer, I hear artists talking about independent artists all the time talking about, well, once I get this song done, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm like, OK, that's great. But how do you plan to promote this song? How do you make sure that after uh, for my independent artists that are watching, how do you make sure like just say if you spend uh, on the low end a thousand dollars to get your song produced on? OK, you spend that money. And you're going to charge 99 cents for Apple Music, or whoever, and um, a lot of your friends is going to stream your music. I'm just be honest with you. <laughs> so once you get that produced, what are you going to do to make sure that people don't forget about that music after you put it out? So we get that first one or two days of hype of you putting your stuff out. And the average the average new artists don't keep promoting it. They don't get uh, keep talking about it. They have this all of this stuff coming up we're gonna drop in seven days and then they do the countdown you've seen it we've all seen it the six days six days until four, uh five days four days three days two days hey guys this drops at midnight and then after about a week you don't hear anything else about this project and granted most people hadn't recouped the money that they put into this project so now if you do so happen to, to recoup your thousand dollars back what do you do now that you're in the black how do you profit because none of that was profit how do you profit from this and the average person they stop they get their initial thing they put this stuff out and it's like after that they stop they don't keep promoting it they don't keep talking about it they don't keep letting people know about it with all these outlets and all these different ways to put your stuff out there now we don't access it we don't keep letting people know about what we have if we have something that's good it's a it's a disservice for us to keep it to ourselves if we have something that's good that could help that could be a blessing that could be whatever to a person and we don't get it out there we don't let them know about it that's our fault that's on us so the, the question is how much does it cost well let's calculate let's calculate how much if i had a uh, let's say my first week out we'll take uh, since we're talking music we'll take a 99 cent song we sell that one song to people all right and we have this big push going into our um you know, we have this big push going into our lunch date. Just say our lunch date. Uh, our lunch date is April the whatever. This is the, what, April the 18th right now. So our lunch date is 10 days from now. April the 28th, we're going to lunch this product. So you do your countdown. You do all this promotion. You do all this promotion. And so you manage some kind of way to get a 1,000 people to buy your product at 99 cents. <laughs> My mathematicians, y'all already know that ain't a lot of money. So you get a you get a thousand people to buy that. Uh, we all know that's nine hundred and ninety dollars. You ain't even broke a thousand dollars that you spent to get that thing produced. We just we just for the sake of, you know, just having a scenario. Right. So you manage over the next 10 days, you manage to get, let's say. Uh, 20 more people because the same hype ain't on it. So you get 20 more people to buy that, right? So now you broke $1,000, you know, a little over $1,000 that you broke. But for the most most people, that initial push that push you up there is gone. So now you're going down here. He'll, you're declining quickly. So how much is this costing you? Well, if you kept that same energy all throughout the year 
and figured out ways, creative ways. I can't really tell you what those are, but if you figured out creative ways to keep promoting this month after month. So we say the first month out we did with our CD or with our single or whatever the case may be, we did, let's say, $2,000 for the first month. So what is my goal? Most people don't have a goal for the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. For a whole year plan for putting that record out and getting it in the face of people. Most people, it dies down after about the first month. So you don't have a marketing plan. You don't have anything that you're trying to do to keep this in the front of people, to keep people thinking about it, to keep it fresh on everybody's mind. Because we know now uh, and, and nowadays uh, people are ADD for lack of better words, you know what I'm saying? And, and no disrespect to anybody that deals with that. I'm just saying in terms of, of the attention span of most people, they forget about your stuff. In about three swipes, you forgot about. It's like, oh man, that's dope, he dropped the record. And we keep going. We don't think about that stuff. And so you have to think about that when it comes to your thing that you put your money, you put your time or your idea that you're invested in how am I going to keep this thing out in front of people? And, and in the meantime, because I'm not doing that, because I can't stay disciplined, what is it costing me? I'm going back to my story that I started with earlier. I can remember in my 20s, you know, I, I had landed a really nice gig at a church. I started my website and everything, and that's all I had. I had my music on my website, and I'm sending people to my website to check out my music. But I was doing other things. I was teaching at the time, you know, here and there. I would do little Skype lessons and stuff here and there. And I was doing YouTube. YouTube was fairly new, but I was doing enough stuff on YouTube that I could have been using YouTube a lot more. And I'm just chilling throughout the day, not really focused, not really disciplined, not really studying entrepreneurship the way that I should be. I was studying a little bit of stuff, I think, at the time. I was reading a book called, my wife and I was reading a book called Inbound Marketing. I learned a little bit about the digital marketing space and how to market yourself online and all that type of stuff. We were learning little by little, but it wasn't like a priority thing. So we were learning a little bit here. We'll learn a little bit there. We'll make a little adjustment here, making a little adjustment there. So over the years, it's like we, you know, I put out a product here and there. I put out a course, but I wasn't really pushing it. Because for me, I always had something else. I was still gigging. You know, I still had my main church gig that I could count on. That was a consistent uh, source of income coming in every week. So I wasn't really depending on anything, you know, uh, having to put out, you know, content, fresh content. All I didn't have to depend on that. You know, I had a lot of going on. I'm, I'm traveling with Canton Jones. You know, I'm doing this, that and the other. Other artists are calling. I'm playing on records. And so all of these things are happening. So it wasn't a real push for me to be disciplined. Now, as a result of that, looking at what I've done in past years, once I got really, really serious about my business, I started counting up my losses. I said, wait a minute. If I had got serious about this the first year, you mean to tell me I could have been doing this, this and this and possibly at the time completely replace my income if I had got serious about it bruh <laughs> and it was like a hard pill to swallow once I really realized how much potential I had in my own business and my own website so from that point on my wife and I we started to revamp the website we started to take it more seriously I started to take you know my course creation and all these different things that I was doing over the years I started to take it more seriously because I started to see the benefit of it and I was like, wait a minute I done this from a course and it's not so much like I'm trying to get over on people. Or I'm not, I'm not trying to take advantage of anybody, any of this stuff, but you have a gift. You have something that you're good at that people want to know and they will be willing to pay you. They will be willing to learn from you this thing that you have, this gift, this ability, this skill that you have. And the average person didn't work on it. They won't work on it. They won't hone it. And, and I, I would like to say this. When you're distracted, and it's going to take a real hard left right here for somebody, but when you're distracted, and I, I really hope some young musicians are watching this, even y'all older cats who know better. <laughs> when you're distracted by things in your life that don't move you closer to what you're trying to do or your relationship with God, 
for my folks who who try to have a relationship with God. When you're distracted by things in your life because you won't get rid of them. These things cloud your vision. So you might have a vision for your life or some things that you're hoping for for your life. But when you're distracted by things that don't move you forward, they end up costing you more than what it's worth. I'll say that again. When you're distracted by things that don't move you forward, they end up costing you way more than what it's worth because you're not considering oh, this thing here. It's not that big a deal. Like, yeah, it is that scrolling on your phone, that stuff you're doing that you shouldn't be doing on your phone. That stuff is costing you. It's costing you time. It clouds your clarity to hear you know, creative ideas come to you. Like, I thank God, you know, for grace. And I'll, I'll give context for that in just a minute. Um, but I thank God for grace and, and allowing me to grow and to say no to things that were otherwise distracting me, keeping me from being productive. It wasn't just that I was being lazy. Sometimes you might have ambition to do stuff. You might have whatever, like, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get that done. And it's like, you have a lack of discipline. You don't have the discipline to tell people no when they call you. You don't have the discipline to tell people no when they want you to come do something. Hey, man, come run down here with me. Come do this. Like, you got to have the discipline to tell people, no, I, I can't go. And not feel like you got to give them a, a, an excuse why you can't do it. Like, no, what I have going on is that important. Because most of us, when, we, when it comes to our own ideas, we don't take our own ideas as serious as we would take an idea if somebody was paying us. Now, keep in mind, this is your business. This is your idea that you're trying to get off the ground, that you're trying to work. But if you was at a nine to five and somebody, hey, man, come run down here. I can't because I, I got to go to work. But when it comes to your own stuff, trying to get better on bass, trying to get better at music, trying to get better at whatever it is you're trying to do. How often do you give people that? And I'm not saying this is for everybody, but how often do you give people that excuse? I can't because I got to work. When it comes to building your business, getting your idea off the ground, getting your record done, how often do you give people an excuse? I can't talk to you right now because I got to work. And it was a hard for me. I'm sociable. I'm very sociable. So it was hard for me to learn how to discipline myself to not answer my phone or not respond to every text or every notification that I get because I'm, just, I'm sociable. And I like I don't like people to feel like. I'm not responding to them. I'm not answering them or, you know, I, I didn't respond to their text because I'm very nitpicky. Like when it comes to people answering their phone and responding to text when it comes to business. At the same time, I understand that people have a life. So I ain't that nitpicky. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't sitting here like you didn't call me back. I ain't on that. But I'm saying in terms of when it comes to, you know, I'm calling you for a gig. or I'm calling you for some work, especially as a producer. And I need to get something done. And I'm calling you. You're a drummer, you're a keyboard player or whatever. And I've called you and you haven't returned my call or I'm sending something to you. And you're not like that's the stuff I'm talking about. And even in that, like, let's let's use that since we're there. How much work have you lost because you won't answer your phone? How much work have you lost because you won't respond to a text message, an email, somebody reaching out to you and they call you first and you mad because somebody else got the gig, but they reached out to you first and you were too busy to answer your phone. Busy doing nothing. Not that you were like, I'm working on my purpose over here. I'm over here building my business. No, you was just not answering your phone. So, so how much did it cost you? Well, that gig paid 400. You, it cost you $400 not responding to that text, right? And it didn't just cost you that $400. Now this person that would have called you for four or five more gigs, they ain't calling you because you have the reputation of not answering your phone. You have the reputation of not showing up prepared. So it's like, yeah, I would call you, but no. Nah. Or you, you, like some of my younger cats, you got the reputation of showing up smelling like weed. So I don't want you in this environment because it looks bad on me calling you because you smell like smoke every time you come around or you smell like alcohol. Now, what you do on your own time, that's on you. Nobody can. You grow. You know what I'm saying? You do whatever you want to do, but understand that everything has a cost associated with it. So while I'm sitting there on my couch watching um, 
what was the show? Was it Supernatural or something like that? You used to come on TNT. I'm sitting there just watching all these binge watching all these shows that I didn't missed out. And you're like, I gotta see this. I got like episode after episode after episode of these different shows, and I'm watching History Channel and all these different how it's made. Just sitting there flipping through the TV, watching stuff. Meanwhile, you're losing money. How much did you not make this year because you didn't push your product? Okay, how many records you got out, Jermaine? Oh, I got two, three records. How much money did you not make this year because you weren't pushing your records? Granted, it's, <laughs> for independent artists, sometimes it's harder to sell your records, um, you know, by way of social media and all that kind of stuff. But it's not impossible. You just got to be creative. You got to find ways to do it. And the average person is not willing to be creative enough to get the result that they're after because it's uncomfortable. I don't want to do it. It's inconvenient. I don't want to do it. Cool. Just understand how much it's going to cost you. Well, it didn't cost me nothing. And it didn't cost you nothing. But how much did you not make as a result of not doing the thing that you should have done? You knew you were supposed to do it. And you just didn't do it. How much did that cost you? How much How much was that worth? I, I posted something the other day when I put my um, hymns and spiritual songs. Since we're talking about it, I dropped this new course. Uh uh last well a week and a half ago i dropped this new course called hymns and spiritual songs is a base course some of you guys have been seeing my videos i saw somebody comment earlier about uh, me putting the, the videos about hymns and all that kind of stuff and don't worry i'm dropping that link <laughs> in the chat for anybody that wants to know about that but anyway i put this i put this course out and i saw somebody comment on one of my posts on one of my social media outlets said oh man i thought about that years ago i thought about something like that i wish i had done that yeah you should have you should have done it when you thought about it but the fact of the matter is you didn't so how much is that costing you because you didn't do it when you thought about it i said last week um uh, this thing I, I got last week it was so good i shared it with folks uh on my social media i was like when god gives you a vision it's not a um it's something to the nature it's not an instruction or it's not i'm sorry it's not an in, it's not a suggestion let me read it because i'm i am ruining this quote right now <laughs> Let's, hold on when he gives you if god get here it is if god gives you a vision he is not giving you an idea he's giving you instruction so this is this coincides with that 100 percent. so when you have a vision for something to do it ain't an idea you're about to miss out on something because you keep sitting here thinking this. Oh, that's a good idea. No, it's instruction. This is what you should be doing. And then you see somebody like me that get it done. <laughs> and like I put it out. Oh, man, I ain't even I thought about that. But man, I ain't think nobody. OK, keep thinking that. Keep thinking it. Somebody needs what you have, but you don't take what you have serious enough to give it to them. So let me let me give you this context that I said I was going to give earlier. There's a verse. It was the verse of the day. If any of you guys read the Bible app, it was the verse of the day. It says uh, Titus 2 and verse 11 says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age. So the grace of God, basically, in a nutshell, this is me, my interpretation. The grace of God is here and it's teaching you, it's showing you how to say no to stuff that's basically taking you off your, your path of what you're supposed to be doing. There are things that come to steal your focus. There are things that come to steal your life. You know, the whole the devil, he comes but to steal, kill and destroy. There are things that are coming to take your life, literally. And it's not it's like it's a slow kill, though. It's kind of like eating candy bars every night before you go to bed. It's a slow kill. You're not going to die. You can eat, you know, Reese's for a year, depending on how old you are and what kind of shape you are already in. But you know what I'm saying? I love them little Reese's cups. I love sneakers and I love them uh, crunches. Nestle crunches, I like those in terms of chocolates. But I have to discipline myself when I go to the grocery store and have to do a random run. You know, uh, husbands, y'all already know what I'm talking about. Yeah, thumbs up if you're a husband, you know what I'm talking about. You got to do them little random runs to the grocery store. I got to run over here and get this. I got to run over. Man, don't that, don't that little sweet section be calling you when you go in there, especially if you're over 25. 
<laughs> it's like that. When you go in that grocery store, man, that sweet section just be, it, it do something to you. Like it's like, man, that, that cake look real good right now. Oh, that 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 lemon bag of Reese's look real good. I, I know I can knock five from them cookies right now. <laughs> and so you have to discipline yourself because little by little, it erodes away at your health. You don't see it because it's subtle. It's good. Like, man, this joint tastes right. Don't get me started on an apple, apple pie. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, let's see, a, a pound cake. <laughs> I see y'all's comments, by the way. I'm trying to focus here. But uh, you got a pound cake. Like, I got hip. Let's see here. I got hip probably about 10, 11 years ago. I got hip to a pound cake and vanilla ice cream. When I tell you, mm, listen, a pound cake, a little slice of pound cake, and, and, and just wrap it around some ice cream, and you got some eating happening right there. So... <laughs> So it would be very difficult when I would go to the grocery store to not grab me, you know, a little a little bucket of ice cream and a pound cake and kill that joint because it, it was it was very tempting. But in moderation is fine. There's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself. There's nothing wrong with indulging every once in a while because I do. But if you make this a practice, it's going to erode away at your health. And you notice after a while, especially after you get after 30. That little, that little tie start coming around your waist. You know, it, it, it'll start creeping up on you. I've been in here, you know, doing my exercises and stuff and trying to make sure I'm, I'm 40 now. So I got to keep that boy. I got to keep him. <laughs> I got to keep him at bay because, you know, it'll creep up on you real quick. So all of these little things, <laughs> seven up pound cake is amazing. Look, you're starting something, Stephen. We we trying to stay focused, man. <laughs> so so it's like all of these little things are subtle. They come to rob you of what you should be doing. The sweets and stuff, they are robbing you of your life. And I, I make that you know funny example. But when we're on our phones, it's doing the same thing. If you're spending most of your day scrolling social media, okay, I got you. Have fun. But at the end of the day, when you weigh out, what you got done in terms of what you set out to do versus how much time you spent on your phone um, scrolling social media, does it measure up? I'll wait. Does it measure up when you look at the amount of practice you got in a day versus the amount of time you was on Instagram or the amount of time you was on, on uh, YouTube or whatever? And you could say, well, it's for educational purposes. You can say that. You can say that I listen, I'm like, I'll get distracted on my phone in a minute and I'll be there. And it's like, you know, I'm sending stuff to people. You know, we laughing. And before you know it, 30 minutes have gone by because it's here to steal your time. Now, how I offset that is I'm extremely productive most of the time. And I try to make a, a point of getting a lot of stuff done. So at least at the end of the day, I can justify, yeah, I spent that time on social media, but here's what I got done. I did this, 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 and I know that there's some productivity happening. But if you can't offset it with the productivity that's happening, so like if you ain't working out like uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you can't be eating no pound cake every night. Like it just, you can't balance that out. You know you're not working out like you should. And you're going to hit this grocery store up and get this pound cake every other day. You, you're going to pay for that. You're going to pay for that by way of your health over time. It's going to be subtle. It's not going to happen overnight. For most people, it's not going to happen overnight. But little by little, those bad habits will catch up with it. So the thing I've learned to do over time is replace that negative habit with a good one. Because when you you take away that one thing, you're leaving empty space and something wants to fill that space that you haven't, uh, you know, you haven't dealt with. Someone wants to fill that space. And if you're not careful, that thing that you were doing before is going to uh, fill that negative space. Going back to that verse of talking about grace is here to help us to train us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-control. That whole thing about being self-controlled. With self-control, I can now replace that negative thing that I was doing with something positive. 
because I'm controlling it. I'm, I'm, I'm having this gift that's given to me through grace of self-control. It's like that's a fruit of the spirit for some of us. Um, but now I'm able to say no to that pound cake. Like I, I, I was faced with that thing yesterday. I had to do a grocery run yesterday and go pick up a few items. And I even walked over there to that sweet section. I looked around and I scoped the scene for a second. It's like, no, nah, Jay, don't do it. Don't do it. And so my my positive thing that I replace the negative with is I eat an apple a day. I literally eat an apple a day every night before I go to bed. I eat an apple. And um, and that's because, you know, I would I'd be wanting sweets. I'd be wanting something. But I know eating that apple a day is, you know, a lot more healthier. You know, what's the, what's the saying? Uh, apple a day keeps the, the doctor away. I don't know if that's true or false. I don't be sick a lot, though. And I am eating that apple and I've been doing this for a few years now, just making it a habit of eating the apple every night before I go to bed. Just something as simple as that. Eating something healthy before I go to bed, you know, and, and drinking more water through the days. Like I even had to discipline myself. A lot of this is thanks to my wife because she's the health, the health person. I ain't <laughs> just, yeah, I say I ain't, I am not the health dude. Um, and a lot of that I was in my earlier years, but the older I got, yeah, like that went out the window, but thanks be to God for my wife. Cause she helps me to kind of stay, uh, disciplined in the area of health. So when it comes to discipline and it costing you, that brings up another point. You got to get somebody around you that helps you to be accountable. You got to get people around you that help you to be accountable, to keep the word that you said you want to do. Some of us is, is losing weight. Some of us is doing our business. I got several guys that I talk to uh, that like they help me to remain accountable with business because we're always talking and they're telling me what they did. And sometimes when I'm like as an entrepreneur, you'll hit those spots like, man, I ain't feeling it. I ain't studying this stuff. Y'all can have it. But when you hear like a friend or somebody else, accountability partner who is talking about, yeah, man, I did this and I'm doing this. And you're hearing that the enthusiasm that they have it. It lifts you out of that little funk or that rut that you're in concerning your own business. And it makes you want to do a little bit more. So when it comes to having discipline and self-control, it's good to uh, put yourself uh, in a community of people who also are trying to exercise discipline, who also are trying to exercise self-control. Because we can't live on an island by ourselves and think we're going to be successful. Like you have to have people around you who are constantly talking some of the same stuff that you're trying to talk, the good stuff that is. Now, if you have people around you who are constantly negative, who are always talking about, I ah, we can't do that, we can't do this, or who are always trying to get you to watch the latest show, that's the wrong company. And I told a young guy just last week, I said, um, bad company corrupts good character. It's Proverbs, old proverb. Bad company corrupts good character. So when you have people around you who are giving you this negative stuff, giving you this negative information, giving you this, this negative feedback, it's corrupting your character. It's not helping you move forward. It's not helping you in becoming who you're supposed to be. It's not doing it. It's not going to do it. So you have to make sure that the company you're keeping is moving you towards the thing that you're supposed to be doing. You have to make sure that the company you have around you is not corrupting the vision that you have. Make sure that you got the right company. You have the right company around you. Keep the good company around you because they're going to inspire you to keep pushing, to keep pursuing the goal that you have. And if you don't have those people around you or that person around you, it's going to be difficult to do it on your own. So how much is that costing you? Just look like I want you to do this. If you're still here, you're still listening to me. You made it this far in the video. Write down that business idea you had write down that personal goal you had for 2022 and see how close did you get to it all right how close did you get to it how much time was put how much energy how much effort was put into that thing to helping you to get to that personal goal how close did you get what was the goal if it was a number amount i'm gonna lose x amount of pounds by this date and you know you didn't really put in the work so the the weight that you currently are or the weight that you ended the year with 
because some of y'all might have started over in January. But the weight that you ended the year with versus the weight that you were when you said you were going to do it. What's the difference? That's how much it costs you. That's how much it costs you. Do the same thing when it comes to money, when it comes to your business. How much money did you have in your business or how much money will you make it in your business when you said, hey, I'm going to do this. This is my goal. And what did you do to get yourself to that? Did you get any training? Did you go learn anything? Did you go read a book? Because I've learned being an entrepreneur, it's not enough to just try to do all this stuff by yourself. That's very important. But you will... Uh, I heard, what was it, this quote by Denzel. I'm pretty sure he ain't the one that originated this quote. He said, don't confuse um, movement for progress. Don't confuse movement with progress. Because you could be moving and doing a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of stuff, but you're not going anywhere. You could be doing a whole bunch of actions, but you're still in the same spot that you were a year ago, two years ago. So you're doing a whole bunch of stuff, but without people giving you or pointing you in the right direction, somebody who's been successful at that thing, somebody who's done it, somebody who got the t-shirt, they can tell you the pitfalls. But if you're just bent on, I got to figure it all out by myself. And if you want to invest in yourself, you want to invest in what you're trying to do, what you're trying to build, then it's going to be hard to get there. And sometimes that investment ain't always monetary. Sometimes that investment is your time. Read this book, listen to this audio book, watch this video, listen, learn. Do something like go study with a person that's done what you're trying to do. Pay them something because when you pay for it, you attach a different value to it. I had to learn that the hard way. You attach a different value to stuff when you pay for it. Because now, like my mom says, bought sense is better than told. Somebody could have told you and you're like, yeah, that's cool. But when you pay for that information, it hits different. It hits different when you pay for the information. So when you spend your money on this thing that you're trying to know, it, it's different. It hits different for you. It put it lights a different fire up under you. Unless you just no discipline, no self-control at all, and you spend money for stuff. And I do have some of you who come on my website and spend money for stuff, and I look at your account, and it's like, that person ain't even open this. He, ain't, he never looked at this. Wow, you just spent money on something for no reason. And you didn't have enough discipline to follow through with the thing you spent money for or you'll see those people uh and this is me on a soapbox for a second but it's for a point so that's that's my excuse (laughs) you'll see those people who come to your site and they'll purchase something and they'll maybe do one video or something like that and they give you all this critiques and all these responses and i'm looking at their account because i do go and look at some of these accounts especially when it's somebody who has all this advice I'll check out what they've done and the work that they put in sometimes. I don't do it all the time, but every now and again, I'll check or we'll look into it and just see. Like, that's interesting. I see that you haven't even done X, Y, and Z. You barely got through this, and you're not even finished with that one. <laughs> but you got all this advice. No, let's let's do the work first. Let's do the work first. Let's put the effort and the energy out first, Right? And then based on that, like, let's see what you have after you've done the work. Because what I've learned about people who are highly successful, they aren't highly critical. Most of them who are highly successful, they don't have time to be highly critical of other people because they're too busy trying to get the next win. But people who got time to be highly critical of everybody else, most of the time ain't getting nothing done on their own. They might be doing something for somebody else. But as far as moving the needle along in their own favor, most of these people, they don't. They just got a whole bunch of ideas and a whole bunch of suggestions that will help everybody else to make their stuff better. Meanwhile, you're doing absolutely nothing on your own. But you got all the ideas. So we have to make sure that we're actually practicing, putting this stuff into play because your ideas that you're giving away to somebody, or if you would do this and you do that, no, it's costing you. Because if you would do it, you could be making the money that you say they're missing. So that's that's costing you in itself. So <laughs> anyway, I hope this I hope this has been helpful. I know this is slightly different uh, in terms of what I'm sharing here, but I, I hope really hope that this is helpful for somebody that's out there. And uh, if you are a person, I wasn't intending to do this. 
But if you are a person, you hear me talking about all this stuff about business and building your own stuff. And it's like, man, I don't even know where to start. Uh, I hear you, Jermaine, but I don't I don't know where to start with this stuff. Well, I can help you there. I, I, I built a coaching program to help people um, figure out what it is they want wanting to do and figuring out how to monetize their own business and stuff. I'm not going to spend time here talking about it, but I will drop a link. You can go check it out for yourself if this is something you're interested in and me helping you. Uh, like I said, I had to make a choice. I had to make a change in my own life to start seeing my own potential and seeing the value of what it is I do and the value of what I'm offering. And it's been so rewarding over the years, not just making money, but to hear the people come back, the people that you've helped come back and say, man, I really appreciate you, uh, you doing this. And I really appreciate you creating this, creating that, making this content, making it available for people like myself. Man, that stuff, I don't take it lightly. If you are a person that said that to me, I don't take that stuff lightly because it affirms what I set out to do. It affirms it and it, it lets me know that it wasn't a waste of time, and which you should know that anyway, because any idea that God gives you is not a waste of time. But when you pursue that thing and you step out and you do it, you should know that it's going to bless somebody. It's going to be a blessing. If you're putting good out, then good is going to come back from it. But if you're putting negative energy out, negative stuff out, then you can expect for that, you know, you can expect for that to show back up at your doorstep at some point. But if you're putting good out, you can look for that good to come back to you. So anyway, um, uh, I missed several of these comments and it was so long gone. <laughs> uh, Skarabi, I didn't speak to you, but greetings to you. Um, Joel says, I found video on six train. Good stuff, man. Um, Lee Wu. I think I spoke to you earlier, but just in case I didn't, good day to you. Good morning, whatever time it is for you there. Uh, J hey, Jermaine. John, what's up, man? Always appreciate your videos. Thank you for being such a good musician and humble at the same time, man. God be the glory. Thank you for watching. Um, Dan Tizzo, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, man, this groove is amazing. It has an inspiring vibe and enlightening and fresh feel to it. Thank you for for listening. I appreciate all you guys for hanging out with me today. Listen, that's all I have for today. I just wanted to share these thoughts with you and hopefully this will be helpful. If you found this video helpful, be sure to share it with somebody. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, be sure to turn on uh, my notifications. Hit that subscribe button. Like this video so it can be found by more people like you. And uh, that's it for me today. Appreciate you guys. I'm out. Peace.